Hello, welcome to the Trading Bell. I'm Noah Kipkimboy. During this pandemic period that the world is going through, the financial systems have become more important and the people who handle these systems are living amongst us. You know of accountants, you know of auditors, and they do belong in professional bodies. What are these professional bodies saying about the current state that we're in? Well, in our discussion today, we shall engage ISPAC to help understand the accounting perspective of our country and the world, and also the way forward, rebounding from the adverse effects of COVID-19. Thank you very much for joining us right here on Trading Bell. Uh, starting us off, the impact of COVID-19 in the accounting profession mm -hmm. in the country. How has that been? Um, thank you so much. Let me start by saying thank you so much for having me um, on the Trading Bill show. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good conversation because the impact on accountants, when you think about accountants, accountants are core to every business, whether it's the smallest business or the largest business in the country. And that means that they're really core to the economy. Um, so when the economy is not performing, when businesses are not performing, um, accountants are also very, very much um, impacted. But what we're looking at in terms of the role of the accountant is actually moving that from the transactional, where you know the accountants, all they're doing is reacting um, in terms of um, accounting and all that into much, a much more advisory role. And the reason I'm saying that for example, when you look at, um, let's, let's just go back to March 2020 when the pandemic hit and we had an abrupt um, shutdown. A lot of businesses woke up, I would say maybe was it on March 16 or what, what was that subsequent day, asking themselves, now the whole population has been told to stay at home. Um, I need some, I have this cost structure, I have salaries to pay, I have uh, debtors, I have um, a loan that I'm servicing, I have other liabilities, and yet my revenue has been cut off almost immediately. And that then now placed the accountant almost, uh, you know, as a central figure in this whole dynamic. Mm -hmm. Because if you're, if you're the CEO, you wanted to know from your accountant, how much money do we have in the bank? How much money are we expecting to come in? And um, what other liabilities um, do we have? As you've always had, cash is king. Mm. And who knows better than your accountant? Um, you know, what revenues or what cash are you expecting in? What have you sold? What are you, have you collected? Who is still owes you money? Which creditors are coming after you? How much in terms of salaries do you have to pay? What can you cut back? Mm -hmm. So that really placed, um, I would say, the, the role of accountants um, uh, front and central in terms of assisting or being part of the business and not just being a support uh, staff no. as has been in the past. Okay. But of course, um, accountants have been, um, of course, uh, quite hit by this. Um, one, in terms of just that stress of managing um, this whole uh, cycle that we've been going through. Of course, um, uh, they've also been affected, I would say, perhaps through the loss of uh, uh, income, especially those accountants who are running their own businesses, who are practitioners, uh, losing income. You, you could be running a business, but then if you're my client, Noah, and you're not doing well as my client, I might continue to serve you, but you will not pay me what you would ordinarily have paid me, you might then decide I am, I am going to reduce or we might come to a payment plan of sorts. Mm -hmm. So all those things have impacted accountants, but I also think it, it, um, it has really elevated the role of accountants mm -hmm. um, in the economy and made people and businesses appreciate more um, the role of accountants. And I ho I'm hoping that many of um, our members have taken this as, as an opportunity to just showcase their relevance mm -hmm. from just being that guy or that a girl who does the debits and credits. Definitely. And uh, the dynamics, since we've seen COVID introduce 
lots of dynamics right now we are seeing you know everything happening virtually mm -hmm. online the use the issues of the trends of people working from home mm -hmm. in the accounting profession what has been the dynamics in, in the profession itself it's very similar we've had to really um, quickly um, adapt to the working from home you know lifestyle uh, because, for example, if I look at the example of um, ISPAC and even my own example, um, you know, some of uh, my staff, we don't always come to the office. Some of them are working from home, but then the ability to use different tools. Um, uh, of course, we've all become masters of uh, uh, Zoom, um, you know, Microsoft Teams and all these other uh, for meetings. Um, so that has has worked. Um, also, just the ability to 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 be able to work from home, access whatever software, whatever systems um, that you need, mm -hmm. um, access to to the bank. You don't online in, and internet banking becomes very very critical. Um, so so that those have been some of the dynamics that um, have taken place. So again, the ability to um, adapt to that has been very very important. Mm -hmm. Um, from an audit perspective, of course, there's been a bit more of a challenge because you're saying that um, normally when, from an audit perspective, I would then agree with you as my client, I'm going to be at your premises for the next two weeks, physically at your premises for the next two to three weeks so that I can examine your books of account. And now you're telling me because of the risk of contracting COVID, then I cannot be at your premises. So you then have to supply me with some of the data um, electronically. Mm -hmm. So of course, all this has brought a lot of other challenges that have come up. You have challenges of uh, cyber security, um, because even as you're exchanging this uh, data, um, you know, across um, uh, internet lines and all that, you don't know whether um, before everything used to be done in the office, so it was easy to control that environment mm -hmm. in terms of cyber security. Mm -hmm. Now we're sitting at home accessing um, this data from home. Maybe the same laptop I'm using at home is the same one that my son uses to play his games, right? So you could have downloaded something, mm -hmm. you know, these games that they download, and it, maybe it has a spyware or whatever, you know, yes. a malware in it. Mm -hmm. And then this is then used to track. So, so cyber security then becomes really critical in terms of making sure that um, um, how we're accessing data from home and systems and databases is secure. Okay. That's number one. I think number two also is the issue of fraud. Um, the fact that someone is sending you, um, you know, data across those lines, it might be easier for them to manipulate that uh, data that they're sending you um, to, to audit. Mm -hmm. So this has brought, uh, you know, about all these different um, challenges issues of just you know working from home alone as human beings we're really social we want to be like together and all that but then now you're telling me you know i have to stay at home and and you know and work from there so there's been quite a lot of um, issues mm -hmm. issues of productivity i have um, a friend of mine who told me that um his staff were working from home but he could see them on facebook because they were running a side hustle i think one was selling i don't know water or whatever yeah. and so he's like okay th is this person actually working or are they running their their side hustle so productivity then becomes really really important mm -hmm. and then you must start thinking about um what are how do you incentivize now your staff because it used to be you get into the office at five at, at eight in the morning you leave at five and as long as you put in your eight hours then you're good. But then now you're saying, you're not in front of me, I cannot see you, I have no clue what you're doing. Mm -hmm. How do I then give you targets to make sure that you're continuing to be productive? Definitely. So quite a number of challenges just coming up from this whole uh, pandemic and, and all that. Definitely, and you've mentioned cyber security. Mm -hmm. uh, are there solutions that uh, you're proposing to, to your members uh, to be aware of, even as they do their you know, working online thing? Well, I might not be the expert in the cyber security field, <laughs> but I think there are various things such as, um, you know, use of uh, VPNs um, that can be used to be able to access, um, you know, the information, making sure that, um, um, I would say, uh, what, what do you call them? Um, you, you have software that almost sweeps your, your, your laptop regularly mm -hmm. to make sure that you don't have any malware that has, uh, you know, installed. Um, perhaps make sure that your staff um, actually have laptops 
that are for work only mm -hmm. that you know that this is not the same laptops that they are using for the other home use and all that eh? mm -hmm. so some of these things um you know become become really really important in terms of uh, staff uh, being uh, being able to then access um the systems and the software um and then of course i think from uh, from an audit perspective is just to be more vigilant in terms of what the client is giving you um, making sure that um, there's a way to corroborate that information. Maybe you can have access to the client systems mm -hmm. to corroborate whatever they're sending you over, mm -hmm. over um, email and all that. Okay. So just just general security and and I think continuing to educate your staff whether they are working from home mm -hmm. or working in the office around cyber security measures is, is very, very important. At the onset of COVID-19 in 2020, right. we saw some incentive measures mm -hmm. uh, or cautionary measures by the government mm -hmm. uh, to shield businesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, majorly included taxation bid. We mm -hmm. saw the corporate tax going down from 30 to 25%, pay as you earn also dropping, uh, and even VAT dropping, all this. Uh, over the past one year, and that was terminated at the beginning of the year 2021. Right. Uh, from your analysis, as people who check the performance and know, you know, the health of businesses, was uh, the termination of these measures too soon, or was it done in 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 the right manner? At ISPAC, we were very concerned about that. Um uh, termination in December mm. because we said really we're not yet out of the woods and as you can see we've been vindicated we're back in lockdown we have no idea how long this current lockdown is going to be uh, primarily because the government has not put in place the appropriate measures such as you know mass vaccinations uh, to make sure that we can a bigger a big chunk of the population can develop um, you know herd immunity and so forth so we were really concerned about um, the termination of those programs because we said it was too soon. Um, I think they've been very helpful even for workers, the pay as you earn it, um, uh, for people earning less than 24,000 mm -hmm. uh, shillings. Um, and of course, um, some reduced uh, uh, brackets going above that up to 25% mm -hmm. as a top rate. Um, similarly for um, uh, corporates that had also been reduced, the, the reduction in VAT and so forth, so that had been um, welcomed uh, by businesses that were trying to recover. So, so those were all lifted, mm -hmm. and um, in addition to the lifting, um, or maybe reinstated back to where they were, the 30% came in. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, we then now have a new tax that was introduced, a 1% minimum uh, tax that's going to be, I would say, maybe even really really punitive to a lot of small businesses mm -hmm. because it's it's telling people that um, um, we don't really care whether you've made a profit or not um, all I want is to take one percent of your top line mm -hmm. and a lot of the businesses that will be impacted are um, the businesses that have thin margins which are mainly the SMEs distributors mm -hmm. and so forth mm -hmm. because assume that um, your revenue is a hundred million um, uh, yeah, 100 million shillings, mm -hmm. uh, maybe let's say a billion shillings, you're going to be asked for um, maybe 10 million shillings in terms of taxes. And yet you might find that a lot of these businesses have very thin margins. For example, if you take a hardware selling something like cement, I think they probably have a margin of less than 40 shillings, uh, you know, a gross margin that is. So you haven't even deducted your expenditure, your distribution costs, mm -hmm. your um, office space and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that was is effective quarter one and it's due on April 20th. Mm -hmm. um, of course we're seeing that the IMF is also pushing saying that we're, there, there's going to be more taxes including additional fuel taxes. Um, but I think the biggest challenge for this for the business community is really at the end of the day who pays taxes in this country. It's really the business community. Government doesn't pay tax. And if you don't create a conducive environment for business to, to recover, mm -hmm. to get money to employ people and to build upon the business so that uh, you're selling more and so forth, mm -hmm. 
if business does not recover, this country does will not recover. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's really the bottom line. So, mm -hmm. so there's, I mean, I think there's a lot of dynamics, but um, and it's really not clear how the government is looking at it in total. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because now we have seen, uh, as you've said, the uh, reintroduction of lockdown measures in the five counties. Mm -hmm. uh, but globally, even there's this this new rebirth. We saw the other day. Uh, Janet Yellen, uh, U.S. Secretary, uh, speaking about you know the global minimum corporate tax for uh, just to standardize things across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, from where you sit, uh, is is it something that is achievable? And it was backed by IMF. They're also pushing the same thing mm -hmm. to reduce uh, people shifting money into tax havens and whatnot. And how will that impact uh, an economy like ours? Well, I think that's an interesting, um, when, when we look at it, of course, the, the, um, the U.S. is backing it now. I, I, for sure, we can see there it's a new regime, the Democrats. But you also saw the big fight that was there in Australia. Um, I don't know, was it with, it was with Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. When they had even taken Australia off, um, you know, their search engines and so forth. So, so it's, it, it's, it's a big issue because um, we've seen some of these um, global monopolies um, or rather global large companies um, such as um, the Facebooks and um, the Amazons and so forth, especially doing business um, on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them will look for uh, tax juris jurisdictions that have really low tax. You find them there in Ireland and other such places. Mm -hmm. So they're not paying as much tax and I think this is where um, the U.S. is trying to go so as to, to get hold of them. I know we've had the same similar challenges in Kenya with the multinationals um, um, and that's where you had things like transfer pricing brought in mm -hmm. where multinationals were, were sort of uh, you know selling their products to their overseas subsidiaries at uh, maybe rock bottom you know very low prices and um, you know when they go and sell the same rose flower to Tesco's or to some other company in the in the UK at a much higher. Mm -hmm. So I think those are some of the challenges. Um, I know that we have um, um, the new tax we've introduced uh, for online um, digital, service digital tax. services tax. Mm -hmm. um, and I see that's already started um, to be affected because you've seen if um, you're buying something on um, um, either Amazon or even I think I was buying something on um, on Apple, mm -hmm. Apple store, and I saw that they had now included a tax. So mm -hmm. whatever I would, maybe if I was paying like two dollars for it, now there's there's a tax that I'm paying, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully if that money is collected, um, because it's also it's a consumption tax. Mm -hmm. So I think then that makes a lot of sense because one of the things we've said to the government, you must expand the tax base, mm -hmm. and I think um, things like the di digital services tax, which are consumption taxes like VAT. I think we welcome those. Mm -hmm. I think our concern would be on other taxes that um, are not necessarily supportive of, of businesses. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and briefly as you close up, of yes. course, the, the, the rebound uh, from the COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. which again, we are seeing new variants, new waves, mm -hmm. but for the Kenyan economy to rebound, uh, what will that rebound and bounce back be pegged on? In my opinion, the rebound can only be pegged on a mass vaccination. I was actually thinking about this, um, um, and uh, we really are in the process of, of, of writing to, to the Minister of Health and um, the Cabinet Secretary for the Treasury, that we're spending, we're, we, have, we have a budget of three trillion, which we financed more than a trillion of that with debt. If you look at the Kenyan population, we probably have about 20 million adults, above 18. Let's assume that 10 million of those live in areas that have low transmission risk. So maybe we're left with about 10 million in the areas of high transmission risk. So we need to be able to bring in enough doses of the vaccine to be able to vaccinate all those 10 million people. That would be about 20 doses if you're going for the AstraZeneca. Um, which I think, based on what I've seen in developing countries, it's selling for about $7 a dose. Mm -hmm. So if you take that, it's about $15 for two doses, plus add another $15, let's say, for distribution costs. So that takes you to about $30 mm -hmm. per person 
vaccinated. So if you take $30 times maybe um, 10 million people, that's about $400 million. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, 50 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. I think we can take 50 billion shillings in this country, just need to float a bond or take, rearrange our priorities. Mm -hmm. Buy the vaccines, vaccinate everybody, and we'll start to see like the US and the UK that have done those mass vaccination exercises that they're now ready to start reopening the economies and they can say that we're, we don't have any people dying, you know, from, from COVID disease. Mm -hmm. But we cannot sit here and be so helpless and say we're waiting for the donors to come and give us money. And yet we are busy putting in so much money into infrastructure. We're building this uh, road on Uhuru Highway. Mm -hmm. So what's the use of building a road if uh, the airport is shut and all, everything else is shut? Let us put our priority where it should be, which is to mark, uh, mass vaccination exercise. We actually vote 12 million people in a single day. Mm -hmm. We did that Huduma card thing in a week. Right? Are you telling me that we cannot vaccinate 10 million people in, in a couple of weeks? And it's I'm saying in three weeks we've only vaccinated 300,000 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. I think the government needs to put the money where its mouth is, and that is to vaccinate people, to reopen the economy, and we have the money. We cannot say that as Kenya we cannot afford 50 or 60 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. I think that is not acceptable to Kenyans. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much Thank for you. your insights. Okay. I appreciate that. Sipia Rose Mora giving us her insights. Of course, as the chair of ESPAC, but also as a professional who's looking at our economy, our country, and saying for us to rebound, then we have to prioritize health, make sure there is max va mass vaccination, Everyone is bold enough to go back to work, reopen the economy, and get back to business. Well, that is this part of the trading bell. Right now, we head to the markets, shall we?